most people love animals. Most people love animals. And so you may have an absolute 100% exclusion in your lease, but I'm telling you, they're sneaking those animals in. You probably already know this. Even when there's an absolute prohibition, they're gonna do certain things. Smoking is that way too. Uh, but we're not talking about smoking, we're talking about animals. And it's important to discuss animals and not pets because we live in an age where they're different. Not every animal is actually a pet, but every pet should be an animal. I'm gonna explain. So, uh, unless it's a rock. Uh, I wasn't around uh, in the 70s. I, I, I understand that that used to be a thing. When you are first screening tenants, it is important to get it out in the open. I don't care about pets. I'm interested in animals. In fact, what I tell landlords all the time, when you're screening people, I wanna know all of the adults, all of the children, and all of the animals who will be in this property, right? Because what happens if they say, it's just me, and then you show up, and there's a zoo, and five zookeepers, mm -hmm. right? That's not what we agreed to. You have unauthorized occupants and probably unauthorized animals. Right? And so you want all these disclosures in the screening, right? And if in your screening, one of your prohibitions is animals, you want that to be absolutely clear, no pets, no pets allowed. But let's say they disclose two adults, two kids, and a goldfish. And in your mind, you're like, okay, goldfish, I can deal with that. But they've disclosed that goldfish. And even though your lease says 100% no animals, you don't have a problem with the goldfish because they disclosed it. But you come in and inspect, and you in fact find two adults, two children, a goldfish, and a cat. Now, because you got them to disclose these things early, you can hit them with a notice of default for misrepresentation or for violation of the provision <coughs> that says no pets without my consent. And so that's important. You always want to make sure you're issuing a written notice and catching them on this. But by asking about animals, you're less likely to be later told, oh, this is my emotional support cat, right? Or my emotional support armadillo, right? Some of these get very exotic, my emotional support peacock, right? I once heard about someone trying to get on a plane with an emotional support wolverine. That's how crazy it gets. Mm -hmm. And you think, that's a dangerous creature. Well, not to me, he keeps me calm. Maybe, but he makes everybody else very, very nervous. And now you're thinking, well, if the federal government allows this, in fact, if the federal government protects this behavior, what do I do? Well, you need to know what the government says about <coughs> these kinds of animals. So certainly you're having them disclose it all in the application process. If you find that they have one, and they later tell you, oh, by the way, this is an emotional support animal. What do you do? Landlords, as always, we welcome you to follow us on our Instagram page. If you're not a member yet, join us on Facebook. Uh, and if you enjoy what you see here, give us a thumbs up. Click that like button. We enjoy that very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. First, it's important to understand the distinction between an emotional support animal and a service animal. In the state of Texas, only a dog can be a service animal. Now, the federal government allows small horses, uh, and I guess if somebody fought you on it, they could have a seeing eye little horse. Uh, but here's the thing. If somebody's blind, this is an open and obvious thing, and if they needed to get around, they needed to live, you can't prohibit them from having it. And chances are pretty high that in the application process, you're going to know these things. The, 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 the service animals are typically not hidden. Those are usually right there out in the open. And they're for people who are the most deserving, the most in need of these animals. And so understand there is a difference, even though in the law, they have the same rights. A service animal, generally a dog, in Texas, almost exclusively a dog, because the, 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 the code limits it to dogs, but the federal government says, again, a small horse could also uh, satisfy this definition. <coughs> but typically in Texas, a dog. Certain service animals,
cover certain disabilities that are not obvious. Okay, so let's say a dog can detect when someone is having a seizure. A person who suffers from seizures doesn't, like a blind person, have some open and obvious um, sort of condition. For this kind of situation, you might request some kind of documentation from a doctor that explains that they have a medical need for this medical device, right? So that animal is not a pet, they are a medical device. And as long as they can establish that with a letter, usually from a doctor, um, they get to keep them. Now the emotional support ones are, are, are different because there's not, again, it's, it's not open and obvious. People who suffer from emotional issues, <coughs> you, you, you kind of can't tell. And it's not limited to a dog or a small horse. <coughs> it could be any animal that is otherwise a domestic animal allowed under the law. So they can't have an emotional support <coughs> giraffe. They can't have an emotional support tiger. But they could have an emotional support guinea pig or an emotional support hamster, dog, cat, baby goat. You see those little teacup? Well, constrictor? You could have a You could have a snake, yes. Now, not all snakes are, in fact, are boa constrictors banned in the city of Houston? I don't know, you'd have to, you'd have to consult local law. Uh, in, in certain jurisdictions, certain <coughs> snakes are banned. Uh, but yes, I mean, if they're allowed, they're allowed. And so as long as the, the law permits it, you have to make a reasonable accommodation, right? A tiger wouldn't pass, a rhinoceros wouldn't pass. And, and so it would be unreasonable for you to allow that. But any other animal that otherwise can come in, uh, in according to the law, uh, you would have to allow if, they too can supply you with some kind of written documentation from a medical professional that says the following, patient X does have a medical condition that requires animal Y, which serves as an emotional support animal or satisfy some other medical need for patient X. Now let's say they get a letter that says, I have PTSD but it mentions nothing about the dog. They've met one test, but not the other. You can deny them. Let's say they have a letter that they pulled from the internet. Okay, it appears they've met the test, but like with all things screening, you're going to pick up the phone and you're gonna call. But sometimes they'll just download stuff from the internet. They'll fill it in themselves, but it cannot be verified. So just like when you're screening somebody's employment, just like when you're screening somebody's rental history, you can call these people and just confirm that they even exist. If you can't, you have a reasonable basis to deny them this accommodation, right? They have the burden to show you that it is legitimate, not you. You don't just <coughs> believe them on their face. In fact, the law now, and this is Texas Human Resources Code section 121.006 makes it a crime to pretend that you have a medical device animal. It is now an actual crime to fake having a medical resource animal. And so you might start mentioning that when you're screening. Then by the way, Texas Human Resource Code section 121.006 makes it a crime. Is this a legitimate ESA? Is this an emotional support animal? Is this a service animal? Because if it's not, um, that's a violation of criminal law uh, and would not be permitted. I prohibit animals and so uh, an animal in violation of this law is also a crime. And when all this is in your original screening, it's less likely to occur. If you hold tenants to this test, and I don't know how many times I get landlords who say, I've been hit with an emotional support animal, what am I supposed to do? You ask two questions. Do you have any documentation to support your condition? And do you have any documentation to support the fact that this animal satisfies that condition? That's it. They may have one, but not the other. They don't pass the test. If they have both, they pass the test, and you are not allowed to prohibit them. But you are allowed to protect your property. So the last thing I want to talk about with 
animals is because I, I, I get all these landlords who are just, oh, I can't believe it. I, I don't, I didn't want a cat. I didn't want dogs on the property. Yada, 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 yada. And they're, they're, they're infuriated because they're going to cause so much harm to the property. Remember what we talked about earlier in the talk. It is incumbent on you, property manager, homeowner, investor, to be on the property at least twice. When there is an animal that you didn't want, it might be three times in a given 12 month period. So that if there is damage from this emotional support animal, you are <coughs> hitting them with that. And you're saying, all right, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna repair this. And now I'm giving you a notice. You're in violation of the lease for damaging the property. Get your animal in order. And then you come back, and wouldn't you know it, they did the exact same thing again. And now you charge them for the first repair, I'm charging you again, I'm doing the same repair, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to issue another bill, and you will be charged. And here is your second violation. And you come in again, and it happens again. Three strikes and you're out. I'm sorry, I'm giving you a notice to vacate. This is the third time I'm coming in, you will pay for this repair, but now you have to leave because you have been unable to protect the property from your animal. It doesn't matter that they're an emotional support animal. It really doesn't. That doesn't give them the right to destroy your property. So you don't have to sit silently and just take it because they are protected by the law. They're not protected in terms of the damage that uh, animal can cause. So if they can't prove it, they violated Texas criminal law. If their animal damages the property, you can issue notice, make repairs, and then issue bills. And if they can't control their animal, ultimately you can remove them from the property because you have the right to protect your property.